seven. And the turn goes down the field, and it's caught and breathes in for the touchdown. Two things in life that suck. Death, taxes, and 85 will always go. New Stripe City, a podcast for diehard Bengals fans. I'm your host, Ace Boogie. And today, man, we're going to get into uh, a recap of the Pro Bowl. We had a couple Bengals there. We'll, we'll touch on how they did there. We'll also talk about A.J. McCarron as far as uh, the trade rumors and certain news bits around the league. And we'll also talk about Bryson Albright, uh, one of the new signings for the Bengals, as well as some Bengals-related topics. So, getting into things, um, if you guys get a chance, make sure you check us out at newstripecity.blogspot.com. I'm on there now uploading articles. We're also in the market for looking for some writers. So, if you feel like you have some journalism skills and you're a huge Bengals fan, we'd love to have you over at New Stripe City. Uh, Make sure that you send me an email at ammba. 513 at iCloud.com. You can also reach me on the Facebook page on New Stripe City. And if you haven't followed that or followed us there, make sure you check that out because I do some special things on that site as well. So be sure that you subscribe for our podcast. Uh, You can also catch that on Podcast Garden. Make sure that you also follow us and like us on Facebook. And um, be sure to also give me a follow on Twitter at AMBA513. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get into our first news bit, which is Bryson Albright. So the Bengals uh, made an interesting transaction in signing a guy in uh, Bryson Albright that was a former St. X bomber. So he played and grew up in the Natty, uh, played at St. X. And I kind of was interested in this guy. I was wondering why he was so hot out there, why so many people were talking about him. And I went and just did some research on him. So, of course, he grew up in Cincinnati. We all know that. Uh, But he also played at Miami of Ohio, so he didn't go too far uh, once he graduated. But he was pretty good there. Um, Now, I I did do an article, so you might want to check that out. It's a more in-depth analysis of the guy. But... He is pretty impressive, Um, but the most interesting part was I saw that he was more so used at defensive end. Now, he did have plays where he made interceptions in college and things of that nature, but he seemed to primarily be an edge rusher, and I thought that this was a very interesting acquisition because he's coming in as possibly a smaller uh, 4-3 defensive end, possibly. I mean, he could play at the Sam. He could play at the defensive end. But either way, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, it looks like the Bengals pulled this guy off of the Buffalo Bills uh, practice squad. So it seems like they, they got a, a little bit, in a sense, of revenge against the Buffalo Bills for doing that the year before with James Wilder. So that was pretty interesting to see that. But he's a guy that mostly plays special teams there. Uh, but it's interesting because... Um, The Buffalo Bills lost Shaq Shaq Lawson last year, and this guy kind of stepped in and kind of carved out a role, and he actually impressed a lot of the Buffalo Bills coaching staff there. So this was a guy that was undrafted, and he ended up actually making the final roster. So he's a guy that you need to keep an eye on. To me, I could see the Bengals kind of using him as a Chris Carter kind of guy or a James Harrison kind of guy. Sometimes he'll, you know, rush from the defensive end spot. Sometimes he'll stand up. So I think that he's a guy that is your patented Bengals guy. He seems like he's a hard worker. Uh, He has a high motor. Uh, He's a very natural pass rusher, but he can also tackle. So he's pretty good at tackling as well. And he's a guy that put on 20 pounds. Initially when he came into the NFL, he was only 225 pounds, 6'5". Now he's up to 243 according to the Bills website. So he's around that area that Chris Carter is at. Chris Carter, I believe, was actually within the same weight range, but he actually was shorter. So this is going to be a guy to definitely um, uh, keep your antennas up on. And He could be a guy that could come out of nowhere and either stick on the practice squad or possibly even, you know, grab a roster spot. He did it last year with the Bills. 
So um, Bryson Albright is definitely a guy to keep your eye on. Um, moving forward, let's recap the, uh, the 2017 Bengals Pro Bowl. So Andy Dalton, uh, led all AFC quarterbacks. Let me repeat that. He led all AFC quarterbacks, even though this is just a Pro Bowl. There's, these stats really mean nothing, but he led all of them, um, uh, with 10 for 12 for hundred yards passing a touchdown and an interception. Okay. Um, Geno Atkins finished with one and a half sacks. And um, we also had a couple of other Pro Bowlers there with Andrew Whitworth and Carlos Dunlap. And I think that, I mean, the Pro Bowl was the Pro Bowl. We had some Bengals out there doing their thing. But other than Dalton uh, kind of shining and winning, um, especially with that, that touchdown pass to Travis Kelsey, it kind of put the stamp on... Dalton being a pretty legit quarterback, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, he's always been a, a legit quarterback to me, but I say that to say this, I've heard a lot of people talking um, crazy about Andy Dalton. It seems like you either have Bengals fans who are on his side or Bengals fans who are against him, guys that want A.J. McCarron to play, guys that want, I mean, to me, I could kind of see the McCarron stuff, even though I totally agree that Andy Dalton is the right choice between the two, but when you're saying that the Bengals should draft a quarterback in the first round, I really kind of question that. I mean, let's look at Dalton's resume. You're talking about five out of six seasons in the playoffs. You're talking about a guy who, within the past two years, has definitely cut down his interceptions. You're talking about a guy who was having a career year in 2015 before uh, he had an injury against the Steelers. And you're talking about a guy who still threw for 4,000 yards with brand new wide receivers in an offensive line that got him killed on nearly every play. I just really don't understand how you could look at this draft class and say that you really need to draft a quarterback. I think that Andy Dalton within these past two years has proven that he's the guy, right? I mean, we used to question it. Um, there were years where he had 17 to 20 interceptions, but he's turned that around. And I just really do, don't understand, especially when you're seeing this situation that's playing out with the Super Bowl where Matt Ryan, you know, has one, has a career year and now he might be the league MVP. But three years ago, Matt Ryan was, they were trying to basically run him out of Atlanta. And he was the same type of quarterback as, uh, Andy Dalton, if not, um, there was more pressure on him because he was a uh, a first round quarterback. Andy Dalton is a second round quarterback. Okay, like, do you know how many times that uh, second round quarterbacks have failed? You have outliers like Drew Brees out there and things of that nature, but majority of the time, they don't even end up being anything in the NFL. And you get you've got a guy that has commanded the offense. He knows he's a guy. He's led your team to the playoffs a uh, majority of the time since he's been there. Um, he's always in position in a division where you play with the Baltimore Ravens and the Steelers, okay? And I just don't understand why people don't appreciate what he can do. Um, I mean, calling the guy an average quarterback is a lie. It's, it's just, a, honestly, it's a lie. He's not, you know, an elite quarterback. He's close. He's on the cusp of being one. I think he can potentially end up being there. I don't think that that's a stretch at all. But to just call the guy an average quarterback is ridiculous. Andy Dalton is a very good quarterback, okay? Very good quarterback. And it just kills me because people judge him based off of guys that are unfair to compare him to. You can't compare him to Aaron Rodgers can't compare him to a Tom Brady he's not the same type of player he doesn't play that way okay like I mean you're talking about guys that are special that are going down in the Hall of Fame okay Andy Dalton is you know unless he goes on to win a couple Super Bowls maybe he may one day make the Hall of Fame but by no stretch of my imagination would I think that Andy Dalton is an average quarterback given his resume, especially with the division that he plays in. Uh, we take a look over at the AFC South and we look at Andrew Luck. You know, it was a guy that was taken number one overall, plays in a division with a bunch of beanbags. I mean, Tennessee, no, don't get me wrong, Tennessee was a lot better this year. I actually kind of had uh, and gained some respect for them this year. But before that, you had two... 
of the the top five worst teams in your own division. Okay, with the Jaguars and the Titans. If Andy Dalton played in that division, I don't even. I mean, are you serious? So those are things that I kind of tend to look at, and um, people like to say that you know he has all of these weapons around him. That's cool, but you know you took the guys number two and number three receivers from him this year. Uh, you put him. You took his offensive coordinator from him, even though he has a relationship with Zampezi. You take that away from him, and the guy still goes out there and has a pretty decent season. He doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Okay. So I just really don't get it, man. There's and maybe I come from a different walk, but to be honest with you guys, I I've been a huge Bengals fan forever, right? So I was there during the 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 Achilles Smith, John Kitna, Carson Palmer years, all of that, man. I was here for all of that. And to me, I was one of the lone Bengals fans back in the day. I want to say that was like 2009, 2000 2009, I'd probably say 2009, 2010, I gave up on Carson Palmer, and I'm not I'm not mad at saying that. To be honest with you, I was happy when he retired uh, and when he tried to force his way out of there because he was playing trash. Like, I don't understand how people can commend Carson Palmer. Now, now mind you, I'm not talking about 2005 Carson Palmer, not even 2007. I'm talking about 2009 2010 Carson Palmer, man, he was turning the ball over. I even remember watching the Tampa Bay Bucks game and dude like gave, I think he like threw a pick six or something to keep to lead. It was ridiculous. I mean, he could have thrown the ball to like anybody after the game and they would have intercepted it. I think there was a joke that he threw his keys to his wife after the game and his keys were intercepted. So to me, like, this whole Andy bashing is is really, I really don't get it, man. I really don't get it. And like I said, maybe it's different to me because I grew up in Cincinnati. I lived there for uh, the majority of my life. And then I moved to Florida and I've been here for a while. And I've noticed how a lot of the, the Florida teams struggle to find that quarterback. Like a lot of these teams will kill for Andy Dalton, man. Like I was here when the Miami Dolphins were starting Cleo Lemon. Like, that was an actual option for them. Okay? Um, Blaine Gabbert, that was an option. Okay? Um, I mean, even now, look at Blake Bortles. Like, these guys are not good quarterbacks, man. They're not good quarterbacks. So, I just feel like people need to, you know, let Andy Dalton live, man. There's no reason for us to draft a quarterback in the top ten. I mean... I respect Deshaun Watson and all of that, but we don't need Deshaun Watson, man. Like, we really don't. So, to me, um, drafting a quarterback in the first round is not an option at all. Andy Dalton is rightfully the quarterback of this team. I think he's earned uh, that right and that respect. So, before I get off on a tangent, I just wanted to really address that because I see a lot of guys out there still criticizing him, and it just doesn't make sense. I, I really don't understand it. So with that being said, let's get into A.J. McCarron. So there's a lot of hot takes out there on A.J. McCarron. Um, people are saying that uh, the Bengals value him highly and could be looking for a first-round draft pick. To me... Just from what I've read around the league and at Walter Football, on Walter Football, it says that a lot of GMs think that the asking price for a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo at most should be a second round draft pick. Okay, now there's there's reports out there that the Patriots at least want a first rounder. The Browns are possibly entertaining that option. But to me, it kind of sets the market for A.J. McCarron. Now, I was uh, one of the people who thought that A.J. McCarron, if you had that guy, you should have traded him at the end of the 2016 season uh, when he was able to come in, win those games, get you into the playoffs, and almost pull off a victory over the division rival Steelers. They chose not to do that, which I understand. I understand their notion on that because that was one of the few seasons that Andy Dalton, I think that was the first time he's ever gotten hurt outside of his first start, I believe. So 
I understood the Bengals wanting to to keep McCarron because that's a valuable asset to have a quarterback that doesn't derail your playoff um, push. So I understood that, but there's a lot of people thinking that we're going to get you know, a first rounder or a second round pick. And I, I'm just, I just feel like we need to pump the brakes on that. If uh, people are saying that Jimmy Garoppolo at the most is going for a second, um, I think one NFL GM said that he'd definitely give up a third for him. I really think that AJ McCarron cannot go for any much more than a second round pick at the highest. And I really don't even think that's realistic. I honestly think that he'll go for a third rounder. But the thing is, depending on the pick, will the Bengals, you know, want to move him? They consider him a valuable part of what they do. And to me, from his side, it seems like he has been given some inclination that he will be traded. I hope that is true. But it seems like from what I'm hearing that the Bengals really value him. So I hope that they they can go ahead and move on from him and try to draft somebody or, you know, they have another quarterback on the roster now. So I don't know if he's, if he's going to be the answer or not, but in my opinion, I honestly think that they should reach out to the Arizona Cardinals. And if the Arizona Cardinals were offering you, you know, depending on what the Garoppolo possible trade ends up being, if they're offering you a third round pick for AJ McCarron, maybe a third and a fifth, I'd take that deal. A.J. McCarron was a fifth-round draft pick. You have to move him. You have to get something for him before he's a free agent. He's definitely going to go somewhere else. And I think if you bring him back, I don't think that he's the type of guy that would complain, but it will definitely be an uncomfortable situation, in my opinion. So I think that the Bengals eventually will trade him. Um, It's hard to say. I want to say that they will trade him just because of listening to McCarron and hearing some of the things that he talked about and just viewing um, some of his actions afterwards. So we'll see if they trade him. And like I said, I think if they trade him, you get possibly a third round pick for him. Um, Now, the Senior Bowl just wrapped up and there were some pretty cool prospects that were there, some pretty talented under the radar guys that were there. If you've been following me on my Facebook, I've been posting videos of some of those guys before the Senior Bowl actually happened. But from what I can see, um, guys that I was basically looking to scout and that impressed were Zay Jones. Zay Jones is a receiver out of East Carolina. Um, He's more so a slot receiver, but he's pretty explosive. And also Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds actually uh, was probably the player of the game as far as offense. I believe he had six receptions for 96 yards and a touchdown. He's a guy that's like 6'4", 6'5". Um, now he's pretty light. I think he's at 190 pounds. He'll probably put on about 10 to 15 pounds of, uh, of weight once he gets into the NFL. But this guy is a playmaker. He is Basically, Mike Evans' light is what I would kind of compare him to. Some people have compared him to to, uh, uh, Josh Doxson, but those two guys definitely showed out. Um, If you guys have looked at my video mock draft with highlights, um, you'll probably notice in the third round, I'm not even going to try to say this guy's last name, but there's a defensive end at Villanova. This guy's first name is Tano. We'll just call him Tano. This guy is ridiculous. He really honestly fits the prototypical defensive end look that the Bengals go for. So he's like 6'5 or 6'6 six, six or something like that, 280 pounds all muscle. This guy has natural ability, and he was another guy that impressed a lot of teams at the Senior Bowl. Uh, we move on to another guy by the name of uh, Hassan, Hassan, Hassan Reddick, I believe. Uh, linebacker at a temple. This was a guy that started off as a cornerback, converted to defensive end, and then um, is now um, converting to uh, inside linebacker and outside linebacker in the NFL. This guy really stole the show on the defensive side of the ball. Um, He's actually on my prime list. I did release also my pre-combine prime, which you can't really take it at its full value yet because we don't know what sizes guys really are. You know, guys tend to lie, but with these senior bowl guys, they actually have their real weight now. 
height and weight. Now, this could change between now and the combine, but we'll see how things work out. But if you get a chance, definitely check out Hassan Reddick. Um, there's a lot of guys that, that actually um, displayed um, some ability. Um, Adams out of uh, out of uh, Auburn, the defensive tackle. So definitely a lot of guys um, at the senior bowl that the Bengals probably had their eyes on. Uh, there was also a running back there as well. So the Bengals were linked to a couple of prospects. It was good to hear that they talked to Zay Jones. Uh, there were some other guys that they also talked to at the senior bowl. So I think that um, there's, it's very likely that the Bengals will um, possibly take a guy that actually attended the senior bowl, whether it be as an undrafted free agent, whether it's as an actual player um, that they draft with one of their selections. They have 11 picks, um, which I hear they are possibly in the market for trading to move up because they feel like 11 players cannot uh, fit this roster. So that could be another possibility. But I say that to say this, do not take the senior ball for granted. That is where the Bengals actually met up with Andy Dalton. Okay, so that just shows you how important the senior bowl is. Um, Looking off into other things, uh, as far as some of the players that the Bengals found interesting, when you look at it, they actually were looking at an offensive tackle out of USC, uh, Zach Banner, another guy who I think is a sleeper, um, Western Kentucky wide receiver Taewon Taylor. Keep an eye on this guy. A lot of people have uh, compared him to Michael Crabtree. I'd probably say he's a little bit faster. Even Jeff Hobson wrote an article about him. Uh, Wisconsin running back Corey Clement, that was the running back that I was referring to earlier. Uh, O.J. Howard, um, the tight end, apparently the Bengals were somewhat interested in him. Uh, Offensive tackle Julian Davenport, um, he's a small school guy, but word is, is that he has a lot of potential. Uh, Michigan defensive end Chris Wormley was another one. And did I miss anybody? I don't think I missed anybody so far. But those guys and Zay Jones as well um, were guys that the Bengals talked to. I didn't see anything about them uh, speaking to my boy Josh Reynolds, but I hope that he did catch their eye. Um, But other than that, man, um, it's been sort of a little bit of of a down downtime in terms of Bengals news uh, we're waiting to see what happens with the Super Bowl former Bengals wide receiver Muhammad Sanu and um, our other linebacker Matt Ingle are actually both facing off against each other so I think that that'll be interesting to see which one of these guys um, you know end up a Super Bowl champion but honestly man it's all about the 5-1-3 so I really don't have a vested interest on this Super Bowl I'm really ready for our guys to kind of get back into the shape of things. Uh, One last thing that I want to touch on, man, is the Marvin Lewis extension. So Marvin Lewis was, was basically, basically put it out there that he's ready for an extension, right? And I really didn't know how to feel about that. Um, If you guys watch my episode, The Funeral, you know why I feel like this. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate what Marvin has done for us. I've always been a pro Marvin guy, but it just really changed last year for me, man. It just really changed some of the decisions that were made, you know, some of the ways that the season went, some of the major decisions and key games, the the clock management. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to get on my soapbox, but I think that it's kind of arrogant to be asking for an extension given the circumstances of last season. Uh, To me, I feel like other teams possibly could have moved on and fired um, their head coach for the performance that we had. But, you know, Marvin was dealt, in his defense, he was dealt, you know, a bad hand in in some instances as far as um, him revealing that Jeremy Hill was injured for the most part of the season. Um, he also said that Rex Burkhead at one point was hurt and Giovanni was hurt. So basically the running back position as a whole were battling injuries as early as, uh, the Miami game. So that, I mean, there's that. And then there's a whole bunch of 
different moving parts and pieces around the coaching staff and bringing in newer players and getting them adjusted. So I see that, but I feel like those were reasons why we didn't fire you, if you get my drift. We decided to keep you for this year, even with the struggles, just because there were all of those factors going on. But to get up here and ask for a two-year extension, my friend, I really think that he has to come out and prove and show why he deserves that extension before we give it to him. So there's no telling what's going to happen. Um, I, I don't know if they're just trying to do that just just to quiet down the media about him being on the hot seat and it being a distraction. But to me, honestly, I really don't care. So to me, Marvin, you have to prove it to me again uh, that you're worth that. So, but I mean, I'm not the GM, man. I'm not the owner. Him and Mike Brown have a great relationship. So I'm pretty sure if he asks Mike Brown for an extension, Mike Brown might give him an extension, bro. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all. You know, I would, I would be lying to say that I would be cool with that. But at the end of the day, it's out of our hands. And I mean, really, when you look at this coaching, this coaching class that's out there, there's really nobody that really stands out as far as um, key replacements for Marvin Lewis, um, if not this year, possibly somebody next year. But as of now, um, it's just kind of puzzling. Uh, but but other than that, man, uh, like I said earlier, I'm definitely looking for some writers, looking for some contributors. Um, if you're interested, hit me up. Um, I'll start releasing some more content on there pertaining to the draft and pertaining to stories that I find interesting. I think the next story I'm going to do on newstripecity.blogspot.com is going to be a story on Andy Dalton and Matt Ryan and some of the similarities. Uh, I have a couple of other uh, other uh, things that I want to do as well. So I may be having some more guests on here going forward. And with that, I also want to sh- give a huge shout out to Nardo for um, coming on the last two episodes. I really enjoyed that. And I look forward to having him on and some of the old Bengals talk fam on real soon. So it's a long summer, but we definitely have some uh, content stored and ready for you guys you know this is the Bengals diehard fans man we don't do the whole we not really releasing anything every day because it's too early I'm not with that okay I'm firing on all cylinders it doesn't matter it's who they man as long as I'm pumping something out y'all are gonna get it okay so I leave you guys with a who day all day every day and especially on Sunday Always business, never personal. Here's the third and seven, and the carry goes down the field, and it's caught and breathes in for the touchdown. Anything that like that touch, death, taxes, 85 will always go.